Has this ever happened to you? You're trying to mix a song or record a song or master a song and you hit play and then it starts like skipping or pausing or crackling and you can't mix your song. I swear if it skips one... Oh my God. I just... Ugh. It's literally the most frustrating thing in the world. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some tricks you can do in Cubase to help fix that problem and keep it from happening. As a special thank you for you joining me today, I have a free gift for you. In the description is a link to my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins guide. So if you need more plugins to help you make better sounding music, go and download that guide. I know you're gonna find it super valuable. Let's talk about why this happens. This usually, in most cases, is caused from either your CPU being overrun with too many plugins or your buffer settings on your audio interface are too short. So let's start with the easiest options first. The first thing we can do is increase our buffer settings. What does that mean? So you actually have to go into your drivers for your audio interface. So I have a RME UFX. You might have something like a Focusrite Scarlet or an Audience Evo or like a PreSonus Audio Box or whatever they call it, a FirePod. I don't know. But if you have one of those, you need to open the driver settings of that. And you'll see inside it says buffer size or buffer settings or something like that or latency. A lot of times you're going to get popping and crackling if you have it very short. Short latency is nice if you're recording because your audio that you're recording is going to be more in sync with the audio that's being played back in your speakers. But when we're mixing, it doesn't really matter. So I'm actually going to set it to the highest setting, 2048 samples, okay? And then we're going to hit OK. It's still skipping. Classic, right? Okay, then we want to try a few other options. If you have Cubase, you can try changing your settings on the ASIO guard. To do that, you just go to Studio, Studio Setup, and right here you'll see you have ASIO Guard Level. You just want to make sure you activate that, and I, I have mine set to high. It works really, really, really well for me. Other users and people have reported that maybe the lower settings work better. Just try and experiment with this. I find this is extremely helpful. In my case, we're still glitching out, so let's try a few more things. If the problem isn't with the buffer settings, then it's probably that you're using too much CPU or RAM or something like that. So we wanna free up some of those resources. Okay, so in your session, if you're using virtual instruments, for example, I'm using this contact instrument right now, and it's actively generating all the audio, right? So I have a MIDI track down here. It's being sent to Get Good Drums Modern and Massive. That is really CPU intensive. So what you can do in Cubase and Reaper and a lot of other DAWs is uh, freeze this audio track, okay? What that does is it renders down all of those samples for the entire song and locks the sound as an audio file and then offloads all the processing so that you're not using your computer to generate all those samples all the time. If you don't have that feature, what you can do is just export all the tracks that are associated with your MIDI instrument or your virtual instrument, and then just have those as audio files in your session. And that's actually what I've done for this particular session, is I was able to export all of the drums as individual tracks so that I can bypass or disable the virtual instrument. The next thing we want to do is if you use templates, a lot of times there's unused tracks with plugins that are activated. So go through all your old tracks, things where there's no audio, and either delete the track altogether or disable the plugins that are on there that aren't being used. So for example, I'm just scrolling through here. I have this whole group of these vocal stack tracks. Not a single track is being used, but I have two plugins that are enabled, okay? So you want to make sure that you disable those. Even better in Cubase is to not only bypass, but actually turn off the activation of it. Because sometimes there's some processing that goes on even though it is bypassed. So, so if you want to make absolutely sure you're freeing up all the CPU that's possible, go in and actually deactivate the plugin. Don't just bypass it. Did it work? Nope, still skipping. Now, if you keep running into this problem and you're not using send effects, I would actually recommend that maybe you start looking at using those. 
a send effects bus. It's just a channel that you make that has an effect that's shared across multiple different tracks. So for example, if you have a drum kit, instead of putting a reverb plugin on the snare, on the kick, on the tom, and on the other toms, and on the cymbals and the rooms, you can literally just send the audio to this one track that only has one reverb plugin, and then it's shared across all those different instruments. Okay, so that's really gonna help consolidate all those extra effects that you might not need and free up some more CPU. Something that I find helps when I'm working on a laptop is to actually change my power settings. So if you have a Windows PC, and maybe this applies to Mac as well, I go in and change my power settings from balanced or low energy or whatever to high performance. And I find that that tends to help make sure that there's no CPU throttling that might occur if my software that I'm using isn't set up to use maximum power for my computer. That's as simple as just typing in power and sleep settings and then going to additional power settings and then you can change all that right here. Okay, you don't want power saver, you're gonna want high performance. Cubase actually has an option to automatically change your power settings when Cubase loads up. I'll just show you where that is quickly. You're gonna to go to Studio Setup and then you're going to, right here, activate Steinberg Audio Power Scheme. So that will automatically set that to high performance for you. Now something else you can try is if you're using plugins that have a lot of oversampling, try reducing some of the oversampling. I know that's not the best solution. I know you get a little bit better quality most of the time when you use oversampling, but sometimes you have to back off the oversampling a little bit to free up some more CPU, especially if you're going over 2X oversampling because you start really using a lot of CPU at four, eight, and 16X oversampling. For example, I have a limiter here. We have it set up at 8X oversampling. If I reduce this to 4X, let's see if that solves the problem. Look at that. No more glitching. So we were just overloading our processor because this one plugin was on 8X instead of 4X. Yep, see, here's the glitches again. Now, one final thing that I wanna mention that I find helps all the time, where you try all these things and nothing works, but this last one seems to always fix the problem for me. And it's kind of a weird thing, so to listen closely. When you're working with a lot of different tracks, most of the time, they don't all have audio the entire time, right? Like this, we have this whole track, but only this part has audio. We look at all these other tracks, there's all this dead space and just small sections of audio, okay? So in Cubase, and I'm sure this occurs in other DAWs, when you have your cursor set up to hit play, it's basically any of these tracks that it's touching, it's going to have to load the audio file from your hard drive, okay? So if you have silence here, it will preload all of this data, even though it's silence. If we were to go through the session and clean up all these tracks so that we get rid of all the silence parts, it doesn't have to load all that extra stuff. Okay, and that seems to be the ticket to getting these really big clunky sessions to play back really smoothly all the time. Lucky for us, if you're a Cubase user, there's a really easy way to go through and automatically clean up all these tracks so you don't have to go through and do it yourself. The easiest way to do this is to select all the tracks in the session. Okay, I'm gonna go up to audio, and then it's kind of hidden. You have to go to advanced and then detect silence. Kind of a strange thing, seems weird, right? But this is actually gonna go through and clean up all of our audio for us. You're gonna see the audio track, and then everything that's in this like light blue color is going to be the audio that's kept. Everything that's in the dark color right here is going to be deleted. We wanna make sure we're not deleting any of the tails of reverbs or any of the small nuanced part of a vocal. So for me, about minus 85 dB works great. It's gonna be so low on the noise floor that you're not really gonna see it. Uh, you don't really want to have it set too high because you might start deleting the tails of stuff, okay? But you, this is something you just have to try out for your session depending on how the tracks were recorded. But let's set it for minus 85. And then I also have this set up, minimum time open and close. That's just how long, once it detects that it went over that threshold, is it going to not delete anything? So 
if you have like snare drums or something, usually a second, a thousand milliseconds works great for this. And then I like to add a little bit of pre and post roll to this. Pre-roll means that where it detects that it needs to uh, keep the audio, it's going to go back 100 milliseconds. And you can adjust this to a second if you want to be extra careful or want to capture all the information right before there's audio. Sometimes there's like a quiet breath or something, so you might want to make this higher. But for me, 100 milliseconds works great. And this is going to add a second and a half to the end when it finds that there's no more audio there. Okay. And then the important thing is we want to click Strip Silence. And then if we have a lot of tracks, like I do in this session, I'm going to do process all selected events. And then you can also apply fades automatically, which is kind of cool. So sure, why not? Let's do it. Let's put one millisecond fade so we don't have any pops or clicks. And then we'll click process. And it's going through every single track in the session and automatically removing all of the silence out of it. For me personally, if I have to work on a laptop or something that doesn't have really fast hard drives, this is the only way I can get a larger session to play back on those devices. All right, it just finished. So let me show you what, what it did. Now, if we go through all of our tracks, you can see, look at these Tom hits. It took a 100 milliseconds out before it. So we have plenty of room before and after. We, don't have to, we didn't lose any of the tails on any of these hits. It's pretty remarkable. It went through every single track for me, so I didn't have to do any extra work. Now, if I've missed any tricks or workarounds that you figured out, be sure to drop them in the comments below. It would be amazing if there was just one video that solved everyone's problem. So let's make it this one. I want to remind you to go to the description and download my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins guide. That guide is amazing. Hey, if you're still with me and you found this helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And it's not a bad idea to subscribe because I'll drop new videos every single week that's going to help you make better sounding music and solve these stupid problems that you might run into occasionally. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Bobby Bailo, and I hope to see you in another video.